I'm attempting to complete every single GameCube game, and I'm using a random number generator to pick the next game. Last episode, we took down Shredder with the best turtle in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and in this episode, we're going to drive a lot of Mini Coopers in the Italian Job. The Italian Job was released on June 24th, 2003, and was developed by Pixelogic, and published by Enzo Interactive. This game got old super quick, and I wouldn't recommend this one. The first game that actually made me angry in this series. Before we get started, make sure to like this video because it helps out the channel and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any of the future games. Without further ado, this is my experience with The Italian Job. In The Italian Job, we're going to go through the story mode to consider this one complete. The first mission of the game is called Midtown Meet, but before we get into the game, it shows us a clip from the Italian Job movie. This was nice because it gave the setting for the game and an understanding of what is happening in the world. I like this touch. Each mission in this game starts with a cutscene where we get a voiceover that explains what is happening in the mission and what we need to do to continue the story. In Midtown Meet, we're setting out to meet up with John Bridger's daughter, Stella, because we're going after a man named Steve. Each mission is broken into parts and you have to successfully complete each part of the mission or you have to start at the beginning of that mission. This can be pretty annoying on some of the harder ones, but none of the missions are all that long, so it doesn't really matter too much. If you don't know, The Italian Job is a mission-based racing driving simulator. Each mission has you do something in a specific amount of time to get to an area that has this like big red square that you have to drive your car into to finish that portion of the mission. The first part of this mission has us meeting up with Charlie, which we have no idea who this is at this point in the game. We're going to end up driving Mini Coopers for most of this game. A huge sponsorship deal with this movie when it came out. I don't know if you remember, but it was all about the Mini Cooper. The next part of this mission has us meeting Charlie's team in a basement parking garage. There isn't a whole lot going on in the early missions, but the goal is to get each section done in the quickest time frame and by doing a, as little damage to the car as possible. Something that I wasn't very good at in this game. We arrive at the parking deck and we get another cutscene where we find out that Stella doesn't want the gold, but revenge for what happened to her father. That's the end of the first mission. As I said, it's pretty short and there wasn't much going on. Once you get done with a mission, you get points added to your score, and points taking away from your score based on how quickly you finish the mission, how many stunts you pull off during that mission, or points can be taken away from damaging your car, or how many cars you hit along the way. You need a C or higher to pass the mission, and if you get an A, then you unlock a new vehicle to use in the other modes in the game. We passed this mission with a C, because I was still learning how to play the game at this point, and we head into the next mission called Rental Rampage. This mission has us driving to a driving range, and I wanted to show just how bad I was at driving still at this point in the game. I seriously hit like every car on the road on the way there. Why am I so bad at driving? The driving range is out on the outskirts of the map, and I felt like this part took a while to get there. Once we complete that, we had to drive and meet up with Handsome Rob, which is played by Seth Green in this movie. Once we get there, we have to drive a rental car that is much slower than our Mini Cooper. At this point, we have to escape the cops. The cops in this game aren't good at all. I think the AI for them was at it like last minute or something, because they don't do anything to actually stop you. I'm not sure what happened, but we got caught by them because a car ran into the side of my car. We never stopped moving, it just ran into the side of it and said I was busted. This never happened again in this game, but I just wanted to show it because I thought it was interesting. Anyway, for this part of the mission, we have to drive this car back to our warehouse while evading the cops. A pretty simple mission. We get a B on this mission, even with me crashing my car a bunch of times during the, the opening of that mission. The next mission is called Mini-Me, 
See what they did there, including the Mini Cooper name in the title? Clever. In this mission, we're going around and collecting a bunch of faster Mini Coopers for each driver. We start out by getting the red Mini Cooper. Once we get the Mini Cooper, we have to drive it back to the parking garage, where we'll spend a bunch of time in the future. We decide to drive the new Mini Cooper down to the train station to test out how long it's going to take to get there so we can escape the city. This game has a lot of areas that we're going to see a bunch. It seems a bit lazy, but it makes sense with the plot of the game. We finish this mission with the grade of B again. We're getting a bit better at this game now. The next mission is called Haul Out. This mission has us drive a nice muscle car to get a surveillance van so we can get some information about where the gold is being kept and where Steve is living. These missions are some of the most annoying missions in this game because you have to stay behind the car and just follow it for a long period of time. If the car gets too far away, then you fail the mission. If you get too close to the car, then you lose points. I don't know if this will cause you to also fail the mission, but I never had that issue, so I'm not sure. Once we follow Steve around forever, he finally goes home, and we now know where he lives and where the gold is being kept. That's the end of this mission, and we get an A on this one. It's the first one we got an A on, and when you complete any mission in this game with an A, you unlock a new car. So this is a nice little feature and gives you a reason to play the game and try to get good grades instead of just completing each mission. The next mission is called Many Mayhem. They're sticking with the keeping the many in the title for these missions. We start this mission by taking the Mini Cooper S back to the warehouse. Next, we have to take back the white Mini Cooper S back to the warehouse as well. These parts are all done while avoiding the cops, but nothing really happens. Then the last one we have to take back is the blue Mini Cooper S, which yet again, back to the warehouse. This seems like such a waste of time, but it is what it is, I guess. Because I did so much damage to the vehicles, we ended this mission with a C grade, but it was still passing, so I wasn't really complaining. The next mission is called Cable Calling. This mission is another getting a weird vehicle, so we have to get a cable truck to start out this mission. Once we get the cable truck, we have to take it all the way back to the warehouse. Are you starting to see the trend with this game now? It's taking cars to areas that we've been multiple times. This mission gives us a B grade, and again, wasn't much going on. It's like set up for the later missions, but it was kind of a vibe killer when I was playing the game. The next mission is called Rooftop Raid. In this one, we have to take our rental car and collect a laptop computer. No clue why we had to take this car, but it's fine, I guess. We leave the train station and arrive in a new area. What looks like a pool area and like a high-rise condo building. Once we retrieve the laptop computer, we have to take the computer to the traffic center in Los Angeles. This mission is cool because we have to jump this rental car over a gap. The camera zooms in, we go into slow motion. It has a different angle for the camera which at this point, this had never happened. So this was really, really cool. Once we land, we have to drive up this sketchy landing thing on the side of a building and get over to the roof of the other building with our car. Since we damaged our car and caused a bit of commotion, once we're finished, the cops show up and we have to get ourselves back to the warehouse. This looks like it's going to be tough because this is a lot of cops just waiting at the bottom of the roof for us. Our car takes a huge beating in this mission, but we limp it back to the warehouse and are able to complete the mission with no problems. Matt, aka Tunza, subscribes to us on Twitch right at this moment. So shout out to my dude, Matt, aka Tunza. And if you're not already, follow me on the Twitch channel at Riseago. We get a C on this mission, but I wasn't trying to do that whole mission again. The next mission is called Volatile Venture. This mission opens up and we have to go collect Left Ear's saloon car. I didn't even know what that was when I started this mission. This car just looks like an old car from the 80s or something. I'm not a car guy, so I'm not sure at all. We head back to the driving range to pick up some explosives. I have no idea why there's explosives there. We then have to take these explosives back to the warehouse without hitting anything too hard or the car will explode, like in this clip here. The next try, we're able to get back to the location without blowing the car up and dying. 
So then we complete the mission. We get an A in this mission and was able to unlock a new vehicle for multiplayer. The next mission is called Restaurant Rendezvous. This mission has us back in the Mini Cooper for the first time in a few missions. But it's the slower base model. We have to go to the restaurant because Stella is meeting Steve for dinner. It's like a date or something. I don't know if we're trying to distract him from being home. I'm not really sure. As soon as we get there, we have to jump in our rental car and drive our way back to the driving range. This is the end of that mission and nothing really takes place. We get a C on this mission and I wasn't worried about getting anything better because this mission was so boring. The next mission is called Total Training. We're planning our escape through the subway and we race our good friend Handsome Rob in the first part of this mission. This one is fun. I really like this one. The course is unique to the rest of the game and we actually have to drive better to advance to the next part. Once we finish this section in front of Handsome Rob, we drive right into the next part and have to race Charlie in the second half of the course. This is a bit harder because there's water that will slow your car down a bit, but overall it's still a really fun part. And if this game had more of this, I think I would have enjoyed my time with it more. The last part of this mission has us doing the whole race as one race, and we're taking on both Handsome Rob and Charlie at the same time. This makes this part much more difficult, but it was needed for this point of the game. We win the race because I'm the best at this game and no one can tell me otherwise. And we finish the mission with a B grade. The next mission is called Bullion Busting. This mission has us telling three different armored trucks to find out which one of them is actually holding the gold we need to complete the objective of the story. This is much slower after the race and I was a bit upset to be honest. The first truck is easy to tell because it doesn't move very quickly and isn't far from your starting point. Once we follow it for a bit, it stops on the highway and we have to turn around and get to the next armored truck. This one's pretty easy to tell as well once we catch up to it. The next one requires us to jump our car onto the highway to get to the armored vehicle fast enough. Once we get to it, it's stopped at the bank and we figure out that this one has all the gold inside. This was pretty hard because the limited time and I only finished this mission with five seconds to spare. We complete this mission with an A and get another new vehicle for multiplayer. The next mission is called Metro Madness. This mission has us driving the same race course in the subway as before, but this time it's for real. We drive the blue Mini Cooper S in this mission. Once we get to the halfway section of the race, the armored truck that we blew a hole in the ground underneath is there so we can take all the gold out of it. Steve's goons show up and we now have to escape them. We follow the rest of the course from before to complete the mission, but if you notice at the end of this part, one of Steve's goons spawns right in front of us and then it disappears, but it makes our car take unnecessary damage. I don't know what that was about, pretty weird. That's the end of that mission and we get a B on it. I wonder if we would have gotten an A if that car wouldn't have spawned randomly. The next mission is called Dam Busters. This is like a continuation of the last mission and we have to escape Steve's goons by driving through the outskirts of the city. We get to the top of a dam and that's the end of the first part. The next part has us escaping from Steve's henchmen again as we race through the dam. There is a really cool part where we jump down the side of the dam with our Mini Cooper. We do land it, but then the car flips over onto its hood and then flips back over so we can continue driving. We would have crushed this car and probably died in this act as well, but it was super cool. We finished up this mission by tearing up a golf course by racing through the area. I couldn't have been any closer to failing this mission because of time. We have a quarter of a second left on the clock when I got into the ending square for this mission. This was crazy close, but I was glad I didn't have to redo it. After the poor time bonus and major damage to the car, we finished this mission with a C. I was worried we were going to fail this mission from score alone. The next mission is called Off the Rails. This mission starts with us heading to Union Station. Nothing crazy at all. Since I haven't showed off jumping the random trucks placed around the map, I thought I would include this here. Look! It's so cool! We have to use each of the Mini Coopers again in this mission and take them all to Union Station. 
Yay! Stuff that just drags out the game. We get a C on this mission, and honestly, I was just happy I finished it. The last mission of the game is next, and it's called Payback. In this mission, we have to take the blue Mini Cooper S and taunt Steve. I don't know why we had to do this, but we did. So the first part of this mission has us finding Steve. He's underneath a highway. This part took me forever because I didn't even know how to get down there. And it took a bunch of tries just to figure that out. Then we have to tell Steve for a while. And this might be the worst part of the game. It's super long and he's driving all crazy. I'm going to show you this part and mind you, this was only like half of the chase and it's sped up by 500% in Premiere. This took so long and so many tries, I was getting mad because it's so hard because of his unpredictable driving. Once we chased Steve for a while, we decide it's time to get the last Mini Cooper to Union Station. We basically limp this thing there because it's smoking really bad at this point. We get the car there and we get one last cutscene talking about how the cops joined the chase and it was time for us to get there and catch a train. Steve gets caught by the police, and we make our escape. We get a nice C on the final mission. And I would never try that mission again because of the chase part. We get a little where are they now after we get our grade, and then the credits roll. I wouldn't recommend this game because it gets super old super fast. There are parts that do well like the race course thing, but overall it's just not a good experience. If you want to know what's next, stick around, but if not, thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe, like, and share this video, and we'll see you in the next one. So we got our number generator, our game list is up, and on the count of three, we are going to find out what we are playing next. So in one, two, three, 231. What is the next game on our list? What is 231? Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. So a movie game. That's cool. Uh, action, action adventure platform video game is what it says. So never played it before. Don't know how it is, but that is our next game.